Bullet Group is the company that gave us the ultra rugged Cat S60 smartphone, and this time it's teamed up with Kodak for the photography centric Ektra smartphone. So let's see how good it really is. The Ektra is designed to resemble a classic film camera, and if you're into the whole retro look, then you'll really appreciate the effort put in here. The four leather textured back, extended hand grip at the bottom, and chunky protruding steel ring around the camera lens all scream nostalgia. The Ektra is quite bulky for a smartphone in today's day and age, but it's super light which somewhat makes up for that. The 5-inch display is decently sharp, but the screen itself isn't laminated to the protective glass, which makes it feel old-fashioned. Thankfully, this hasn't hampered touch response. Although its brightness is good, the screen smudges easily and is quite reflective. The Ektra is a single SIM phone. Button placement is good and you even get a dedicated shutter button which can fire up the camera app with a double press. However, there's no fingerprint sensor which is a major disappointment at this price. The phone is powered by a MediaTek Helio X20 SoC which has a total of 10 CPU cores. Although this is one of MediaTek's top tier processors, it delivers about the same performance as Qualcomm's mid-range Snapdragon 652. There's also 3GB of RAM and 32GB of storage, plus the ability to use a micro SD card. For software, we have the slightly older Android Marshmallow running with only minor customizations. Bullet has added some Kodak apps like the Super 8 app, which adds film grain effects to photos and videos to mimic a Super 8 film camera. There's also a Prints app, which lets you place an order for photos to be printed and shipped to you. Overall app and system performance is decent and we didn't face any major hiccups. The phone heats up quickly when using the camera or gaming, so that's something to keep in mind. Media playback is fairly good, although we would have liked a higher quality display, and the rear speaker is quite weak for media. The main focus of the Ektra is its camera. It does a good job during daylight, but isn't really outstanding in any way. Detail levels and colors are good, but there were instances when it got the white balance quite wrong. Low light stills aren't noisy, but details suffer quite a bit. Despite the advertised 6-axis OIS, videos don't really seem to have any stabilization at 1080p or even 4K. Focus is quick, especially when you're panning, and quality is good under good lighting. The front camera is strictly average, and pictures often end up soft and lack detail. The one thing that Ektra gets right is the camera app. There's a mode dial just like you'd see on a DSLR, which makes it easy to change modes. Other controls are also placed intuitively around the viewfinder. The 3000 mAh battery will last a full workday, but don't expect it to go an entire 24 hours on a single charge. Gaming and camera usage makes a sizable dent in the battery level. There's MediaTek's Pump Express fast charging support, which will give you about a 30% charge in about half an hour. It's not great, but it's still better than nothing. Those who love the retro look of Leica and Fujifilm cameras will appreciate the aesthetics of the Ektra. However, as a smartphone, it just doesn't seem to make the cut. It has a decently capable camera, but other things like ergonomics, battery life, and the screen take a backseat. At this price, you're better off with a smartphone like the Honor 8 or even the Samsung Galaxy On Max, both of which offer very good smartphone experiences with equally impressive cameras. So thanks for watching our review. Be sure to check out more videos right here and give us a thumbs up, subscribe and follow us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram.